All right, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about the happiest country in the world in 2019. My name is Nick Redmark. I'm a coach, engineer, and I use the engineering mindset to analyze what makes life better. So what is the happiest country in the world? To answer this question, we are going to look at the latest data available, which comes from the 2018 World Happiness Report. And before we answer the question, we have to ask, how does one measure world happiness? In this report, they used three components to measure happiness. Component number one is positive affect meaning happiness, laughter and enjoyment, all the positive feelings. The question they asked people was, how much positive feelings did you have yesterday? The second component is negative aspect, so worry, sadness and anger. And then finally, the third component was the so-called cantrill ladder. Imagine you have a ladder and on top of the ladder you have the best possible life and on the bottom you have the worst possible life. The question, would, the question they asked people was, where would you position yourself on the ladder? And then give this position a rating from zero to 10. So these were the three components of happiness, positive emotions, negative emotions, and basically general life satisfaction. Lo and behold, this is how the world happiness is distributed. As you can see, most countries have a happiness level that is around five, from 0 to 10. And here you can see the report for each country. I will link to the report below if you want to look at it in detail. But which one was the happiest country in the world? Here it comes, Finland, followed by Norway, Denmark, Iceland, and my own country, Switzerland. Now the next question is, why is this country the happiest country in the world? To answer this question, we must ask ourselves, what makes a country happy in general? And the people from the World Happiness Report have tried to extract strongest predictors of success. And now we're going to look at them. Predictor number one is social support. The answer to the question, if you were in trouble, do you have relatives or friends you can count on to help you whenever you need them or not? Predictor number two is perceived absence of corruption. Meaning the answer to the questions, is corruption widespread throughout the government or not? And is corruption widespread within business or not? Looks like Finnish people perceive a low level of corruption in their institutions. Predictor number three is the freedom to make life choices. Meaning the answer to the question, are you satisfied or dissatisfied with your freedom to choose what you do with your life? And as we know, Northern European countries have very liberal governments in a social sense, meaning that they provide a large degree of social freedom. Predictor number four is generosity, meaning how many people in the population have donated to charity recently, divided by GDP per capita. So generosity is measured relatively to how well off a country. Another predictor is GDP per capita itself, meaning the economical well-being of a country. And then finally we have healthy life expectancy, meaning how long will you live a healthy life? And so now if we go back to the top countries, we see how each individual happiness level is explained by the measures below. As you see, not all happiness is explained by these factors. The purple bar on the right is still the part that is not explained by this model. So that's it for today. This channel is about improving life quality. If you're interested in that, subscribe and click on the bell so you get notifications. See you next time. Bye.